Canto 1. Midway on our life's journey, I found myself in dark woods, the right road lost. To tell about those woods is hard, so tangled and rough and savage, that thinking of it now, I feel the old fear stirring. Death is hardly more bitter. And yet, to treat the good I found there as well, I'll tell what I saw. Though how I came to enter, I cannot well say, being so full of sleep, whatever moment it was, I began to blunder off the true path. But when I came to stop below a hill that marked one end of the valley that had pierced my heart with terror, I looked up toward the crest, and saw its shoulders already mantled in rays of that bright planet that shows the road to everyone, whatever our journey. Then I could feel the terror begin to ease that churned in my heart's lake all through the night, as one still panting ashore from dangerous seas, looks back at the deep he has escaped. My thought returned, still fleeing to regard that grim defile that never left any alive who stayed in it. After I rested my weary body a while, I started again across the wilderness, my left foot always lower on the hill, and suddenly a leopard near the place, the way grew steep, lithe, spotted, quick of foot, blocking the path she stayed before my face, and more than once she made me turn about to go back down. It was early morning still, the fair sun rising with the stars attending it, as when divine love set those beautiful lights into motion at creation's dawn, and the time of day and season combined to fill my heart with hope of that beast with festive skin, but not so much that the next sight wasn't fearful. A lion came at me, his head high as he ran, roaring with hunger, so the air appeared to tremble. Then a grim she-wolf, whose leanness seemed to compress all the world's cravings, that had made miserable such multitudes. She put such heaviness into my spirit, I lost hope of the crest like someone eager to win, who tested by loss, surrenders to gloom and weeps. So did that beast make me feel, as harrowing toward me at a lope, she forced me back toward where the sun is lost. While I was ruining myself back down to the deep, someone appeared, one who seemed nearly to fade, as though from long silence. I cried to his human shape in that great wasteland, Living man or shade, have pity and help me, whichever you may be. No living man, though once I was, he replied. My parents were both Mantuans from Lombardy, and I was born sub Julio, the latter end. I lived in good Augustus's Rome in the day of the false gods who lied. A poet, I hymned Anchises, noble son who came from Troy. When suburb Ilium in its pride was burned, but you, why go back down to such misery? Why not ascend the delightful mountain, source and principle that causes every joy? Then are you Virgil? Are you the font that pours so overwhelming a river of human speech? I answered shamefaced. The glory and light are yours the po that poets follow. May the love that made me search your book in patient study avail me, master. You are my guide and author, whose verses teach the graceful style, whose model has done me honor. See, this beast driving me backward, help me resist, for she makes all my veins and pulses shudder. A different path from this one would be best, for you to find your way from this feral place, he answered, seeing how I wept. This beast, the cause of your complaint, lets no one pass her way, but harries all to death. Her nature is so malign and vicious, she cannot appease her veracity, for feeding makes her hungrier. Many are the beasts she mates, there will be more, until the hound comes, who will give this creature a painful death. Not nourished by earthly fare, he will be fed by wisdom, goodness, and love. Born between Feltro and Feltro, he shall restore low Italy as Nisus fought to achieve, and Turnus, your your eyeless, and uh, Camilla the maiden, all dead from wounds in war. He will remove this lean wolf, hunting her through every region, till he has thrust her back to hell's abyss, where envy first dispatched her on her mission. Therefore I judge it best 
that you should choose to follow me, and I will be your guide, away from here and through an eternal place, to hear the cries of despair, and to behold ancient tormented spirits as they lament in chorus the second death they must abide. Then you shall see those souls who are content to dwell in fire, because they hope some day to join the blessed, toward whom, if your ascent continues, your guide will be one worthier than I. When I must leave you, you will be with her. For the emperor who governs from on high wills I not enter his city, where none may appear who lived like me in rebellion to his law. His empire is everything and everywhere, but that is his kingdom, his city, his seat of awe. Happy is the soul he chooses for that place. I, poet, please, by the God you did not know, help me escape this evil that I face, and worse, lead me to witness what you have said. St. Peter's Gate and the multitudes of woes. Then he set out, and I followed where he led. 